Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. All right, top 20 muscles that every single man must make strong as f not just big, but strong. Because remember, you could have a very strong muscle that does not look big at all, right? You can have very powerful legs despite them looking like chicken legs, right? So do not confuse this tier list with the top muscles that must be big. Even though strength and size are correlated, they are not equal. I made many videos about that. All right, let's get straight to the tier list. The criteria I'm going to use is the muscle must help with combat defense, aesthetics, combat offense, metabolic health, and it's a muscle that you cannot afford to have a significant injury in, right? So if it's a muscle that has a high injury risk and that you cannot afford to be uh, to get injured, then it's definitely going to rank high as well. All right, let's start with biceps. Biceps is going to go into extremely important, mainly because it scores a 4 out of 5. It does not score a 5 out of 5. Right, it's gonna help with combat defense, especially if you're grappling or fighting in a street fight or even just sparring. It obviously helps with aesthetics. Does it help with combat defense? Absolutely, especially if you're wrestling or grappling. Number two, will a bicep injury absolutely devastate you? Absolutely. Number three, does it help with combat offense? Of course, it's gonna be very, very, try sparring when you have an injured bicep, guys. That's when you're gonna realize how important biceps are. Not only your pulling strength is gonna go to trash, but it's gonna be very hard to throw hugs in powerful combinations. Number four, does it help with metabolic health? Not really, right? Because metabolic health is mainly tied to how large your muscle is, right? As far as glycogen synthesis and helping clear out extra glucose from the blood. And number five, does it help with aesthetics? Of course, right? Girls love biceps. So as a man, you cannot afford to have weak biceps for these five reasons, for these four reasons. Next, we have calves. Okay, does it help with combat defense? Well, <laughs> obviously, every muscle is going to help in a, fighting, uh, in a fighting scenario, but does it significantly help with combat defense? If you have very powerful calves, not really, right? It's not really up for debate. Now, in some specific scenarios, yes, but again, I'm referring to a relative basis here, so we're not going to give it that point. Does it have a high injury risk and or will the injury to the muscle be devastating? Yes. If you injure your calves, you are screwed. There's not much you could do with injured calves. Now, again, like I said, they don't have to be huge, but they have to be strong. So we'll give it that point. Next, does it help with combat offense? Of course, right? Most of your punching power is going to come from the bottom up, starting with the calves and going all the way up to your trunk and blah, blah, blah. I already went into details in the other video, so we'll give it that point. Does it help with metabolic health? Not really. And does it drastically enhance your aesthetics? No. I mean, obviously, if you have big calves, you know, it's going to look nice. But relative to the other items on this list, it's not as important for aesthetics. Again, that does not mean that it's not important at all. It does not mean you should have chicken legs. Right. So don't take my words out of context. It just means relative to the other items on this list is not as important for aesthetics. So calves gets a three out of five. That's going to put it at good. Right. It does not hurt to have very powerful calves. Next, let's look at abs. And for abs, I'm going to include both upper and lower abs. Do they help with combat defense? Absolutely. Will an injury to your calves devastate you? You goddamn right. Do they help with combat offense? Of course. I made many videos about that. Most of your punching power is going to come from your legs and your core. Same thing with grappling and wrestling. Your core is extremely underrated when it comes to those functions. Next, does it help with metabolic health? Of course. Your abs is a relatively large muscle. And does it help with aesthetics? Absolutely. So even though I still believe that shredded abs massively overrated, you should still train your abs for the reasons I mentioned earlier, right? Just try not to get shredded because, again, I already went over the, the negatives that come with that. So, guys, you should definitely have powerful abs. Five out of five, mandatory. Again, I'm not referring to visible abs. I'm referring to powerful abs. Being lean enough so that they're visible, that's a bonus, right? Mainly for the aesthetics department. Next, we have chest, your pectoralis muscle. Does it help with combat defense? Of course, there's going to be a lot of pushing in both a professional fight and in a street fight. Not to mention your uppercut heavily relies on how powerful your pecs are, even your hooks to an extent. Next, will a pec injury devastate you? you damn right. It is one of the worst body parts to injure. Next, does it help with metabolic health? Not as much, right? Contrary to what people think, your, your pecs are not that large relative to the other muscles on this list. And does it help with aesthetics? Of course it does, especially if you have your shirt off. Now, again, you can still have a great body with a 
mid to average chest. I mean, the bronze era guys had a lot of flat chest and it still look amazing, but it definitely helps to have a big chest, especially if you have a shirt on. So the packs get a four out of five for this list. Every man must have strong packs. Next, we have spinal erectors. All right, let's see. Do the help with combat defense? Of course. If you cannot extend your back, you screwed. Number two, do they have a high injury risk and or will hurting, injuring your spinal erectors devastate you? You are so goddamn right. Do they help with combat offense? Of course, both in grappling and in striking. And do they help with metabolic health if, if they are trained to maximum hypertrophy? Yes. And do they help with aesthetics attracting the opposite sex? Not really, right? No girl ever said, oh my God, I love your spinal erectors getting bad with me. It doesn't work like that. So it's not going to get that point. Final score, four out of five. It's going to go in extremely important. Next, we have forearms. All right, let's make this quick because this video is getting too long. Does it help with combat defense? Yes, mainly in grappling. If somebody puts you into a choke hold or any submission hold that targets your head, or your neck trust me you're gonna realize <laughs> the importance of having strong forearms and a strong grip next will a forearm injury be absolutely devastating as a man of course you won't be able to grab you won't be able to climb you won't be able to pull you won't be able to make a fist i mean the list goes on right so definitely gets that point next does it help with combat offense of course grip strength is very important in fighting mainly grappling does it help with metabolic health if it is hypertrophy to a large extent of course not it's way too small and last but not least does it help with aesthetics i'm not giving it that point i know that's controversial but yes some girls love forearms but there's also plenty of girls who don't care about forearms also think of the think of most people that we know that have elite physiques they are not known for their forearms guys right nobody goes oh my god arnold was a legend did you see his forearms oh my goodness ronnie coleman yeah you know even though they had forearms nobody really cared that much right so as far as the status goes, I'm not going to give it that point. Yes, if you have big forearms, it looks nice, but it's not a top two, top three of Mount Rushmore uh, muscle when it comes to aesthetics. So it's not going to get that point. So it's going to get three. I'm going to put forearms at good. As a man, you should definitely have strong forearms, but that's mainly for functional reasons. Next, we have glutes. Oh, boy. You guys know how I feel about glutes. Not a big fan of glutes, but I got to be objective. They are very, very, very important, especially uh for fighting all right so let's see does it help with combat defense absolutely mainly grappling and wrestling in maintaining your balance pushing somebody away from you glutes are very underrated when it comes to the aspect next will a glute injury devastate you you are absolutely right most men do not realize how important glutes are until they get a glute injury Next, does it help with combat offense? Case closed. You guys, again, if you watch my video on the most important muscle groups for fighting, you already know. Glutes are super underrated when it comes for combat. Most of your punching power and your pushing power is going to come from your lower body. And a large portion of that is going to come from your glutes. Does it help with metabolic... <laughs> this one is funny. Does it help with metabolic health if it is hypertrophy to a large extent? Unfortunately, yes, right? It's a very, very large muscle. Is the reason why it's called the gluteus maximus. Uh, so it's definitely going to help with metabolic health if it is hypertrophy to a large extent. But you guys already know how I feel about that. I don't think men should have big glutes, but men should have powerful glutes by all means. But, you know, uh, not big glutes. I just feel like that's a little sus. But, you know, chicks dig it. So if you're into that kind of stuff, go for it. And last but not least, does it help with aesthetics? Oh, boy, this one is controversial. OK, so f women love glutes for some reason, you know, on a guy, you know, which is weird as hell to me. Um, but you'd be surprised how many women are like, check out guys glutes. And I know as a man, you know, we thinking like, what the hell, you know, why would you want glutes on a guy? But again, ask women that they're weird as hell. Uh, so as far as the status goes, man, this one is tough. The subjective part of me, you know, doesn't want to give it that point, but the objective part of me does. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm not going to give it the point for status guys, because again, you know, if you, you could still have an aesthetic body without having large glutes. So no, I'm not giving it that point. F y'all. All right, so, so far, that's the four out of five. So having powerful glutes, strong glutes is going to go into extremely important. Next, we have hamstrings, another underrated muscle. I'm going to go fast with this one because it's a boring muscle to many. Does it help with combat defense? Absolutely. Would an injury to your hamstrings be devastating? Guys, not only is one of the most painful injuries, but yes, it will disable you in every way, shape and form. You do not want to have an injury to your hamstrings. Anyone who's ever pulled the hamstrings will confirm. 
Next is the help of combat offense. Of, of course, anything that contributes to punching power is going to get that point. Next is the help of metabolic health. Of course, it's a very, very large muscle. In fact, it's one of the few reasons why I train hamstrings, even though I hate training legs. Right? It's a very large muscle, so it's very important for metabolic health and making sure that you have decent levels of blood glucose after a big carb meal. Right? The glycogen storing capacity is huge. And last but not least, there's the help with aesthetics. I'm not giving it that point. Yes, having nice hamstrings is nice, but no one, and I mean no one, was regarded as the sexiest man alive because they had developed hamstrings. Come on, it's just a bonus. So it gets a four out of five. I'm going to put that in extremely important. Next, we have the heart, the most important muscle on this list. So let's see, does it help with combat defense? Absolutely. Endurance and cardio is everything, not just in a street fight, but obviously in professional fights as well. Will an injury to your heart be devastating? I mean, come on, do I have to answer that? Next, does it help with combat offense? Of course. Does it help with metabolic health? I mean, it is literally at the center of metabolic health. And does it help with aesthetics? Of course not, right? No girl looks at you and says, oh my God, your heart is so big. Definitely not in this context. All right, so it's not going to get that point. So that's the only reason why it's going to go in extremely important and not mandatory. Although being out of breath all the goddamn time is definitely not attractive. But you know what I mean when I say aesthetics. Next, we have the lats. Let's see. Does it help with combat defense? Absolutely. Especially in grappling. Does it have a high injury risk or will a injury to your lats be devastating? You better believe that because you will not be able to pull. You will not be able to climb. You will not be able to perform combinations. Most people underestimate how important the lats are for fighting. Does it help with offense? Again, absolutely. Does it help with metabolic health? Yes, it is a very large muscle, especially if it is hypertrophy to its maximal extent. And does it help with aesthetics? You are, you better believe it, right? That V taper, it's not just shoulders, it's also lats. So five out of five, lats go into mandatory. Next, we have your neck, especially your splenius. That's the back of your neck. That's what you train when you do neck extensions. You guys know I'm a big, big advocate of neck training. So let's see. Does it help with combat defense? It is one of the most important muscles for combat defense. Remember, guys, it doesn't matter how strong you are, how fast you are, how big you are, how intimidating you are. If you get knocked out, the fight is over. And most men, I guarantee you guys, especially young men, most men underestimate how easy it is to knock somebody out. One little mistake and the fight is over. No cutscenes, no time for you to do that combo that you practice for 10 years. Done. I can show you guys endless examples of that. People really underestimate how easy it is to get knocked out. And having a powerful neck is crucial to prevent that. Now, of course, to be technical, the muscle that's going to help the most with preventing knockouts is your sternal cleidomastoid, which is the front side of your neck. But I'm just going to put it all together because obviously you need both for stability. So neck is going to help with combat defense. An injury to your neck is obviously devastating. Combat offense in fact, I'm going to give it that point, right? Because, yeah, it plays a huge role in grappling, especially if you're on the ground. And it also plays a role if you throw headbutts, right? People underestimate how important headbutts are, especially in a street fight, right? Headbutts are devastating. So I give it the offense point. Does it help with metabolic health? No, it's way too small. And does it help with aesthetics? Yes, people underestimate how important neck is for aesthetics, right? Try to Photoshop yourself with a pencil neck and you see what I'm talking about. So neck is going to get four out of five. I'm going to put it at extremely important, both for the splenius and for the sternocleidomastoid. Next, we have your obliques. Do the help with combat defense? Of course. Would an injury to your obliques be devastating? Yes. Do the help with offense? Absolutely. Core rotation is paramount for punching power. Do the help with metabolic health? Yes. Right. They're, they're a large muscle group to an extent. And do the help with aesthetics? Yes. Especially if you lean, if you have a low body fat percentage. So, that's going to go into mandatory. You got to train your bleach, guys. Next, we have your quads. Oh, boy. Do the help with combat defense? That goes without saying. Will an injury to your quads be devastating as a man? Absolutely. Do the help with offense? Yes. Kicking, wrestling, you name it. And remember, having good takedown defense is a form of offense in itself, right? Because it obviously intimidates the opponent. And your quads are very important in takedown defense, as well as your abs and core. But anyway... Does it help with metabolic health? Yes, it is a very large muscle group. And does it help with aesthetics? Not so much, right? Not so much. Because number one, we wear pants most of the time, pants and shorts. And number two, if your quads are way too big, it actually takes away from your V-taper, right? It gives you a neck taper, but most girls love that V-taper. So I'm going to give this a four out of five. So I'm going to put quads in extremely important. 
Next, we have the serratus anterior. Most people heavily underestimate this muscle. Does it help with combat defense? Yes, to an extent. Will an injury to your serratus anterior be devastating? Absolutely. Does it help with offense? Of course, especially with punching power. Does it help with metabolic health? Not so much. It's not that large. Does it help with aesthetics? Not at all. So it's going to get a three out of five. I'm going to put that at good. Next, we have your tibia. Oh, boy. Does it help with defense? Not so much. Will an injury to your TBA be devastating? Absolutely. I got to give it that. As much as, as much as I like to shit on this muscle, it's actually very important for that. Does it help significantly with combat offense? No. Right? Say so yes and no, but significantly the answer is no. Obviously, it plays a role. Like I said, every muscle on this list plays a role in fighting. But when it comes to significant role, I'm not going to give it that point. Like I always say, no one became world champion because of that overdeveloped tibia. Next, does it help with metabolic health? Of course not. It's way too small. And does it help with aesthetics? Hell no. Again, no girl ever, ever looked at a guy and said, oh my God, I'm so wet right now. Look at your tibia. So I'm going to put that at low ROI, right? You could train it if you want, but the return on investment is not that high compared to the other items on this list, right? We're not all soccer players. Next, you have your terrace major and minor. Do they help with defense? Yes. Any pulling muscle is going to help with defense and offense. Will an injury to this muscle be devastating? Yes. Does it help with metabolic health? No. Does it help with aesthetics? Not really, right? You know, the most aesthetic part of your back is not your terrace major and minor. Now, if it's developed, great, but it does not give it that wow factor, right? Now, it helps with the demon back look, right? Because you want everything to pop out. But overall, no. Only bodybuilding experts and nerds like us know this muscle even exists. But the average person or the average girl, not so much. So I'm going to put that at good. Only because, mainly because of his role in combat. Next, your trapezius. Both upper traps, lower traps, and middle traps, right? To make this lift shorter. Does it help with defense? Absolutely. Would an injury to your traps be devastating? You are f if you get an injury to your traps. Most people do not realize how important the traps are, again, until they get a traps injury. Scapular retraction, gone. Scapular elevation, gone. I mean, your shoulder blade is so important for everyday tasks, let alone fighting. Next, does it help with metabolic health? Yes. I mean, if you train upper, lower, and mid traps, yes, a relatively large muscle. And does it help with aesthetics? Absolutely. Most of the thickness in your back is going to come from your mid and lower traps. And obviously, that look from the front is going to be upper and middle traps. So trapezius gets a mandatory five out of five triceps does it help with combat defense of course would an injury to your triceps be absolutely devastating yes does it help with combat offense common sense does it help a lot with metabolic health believe it or not the triceps are actually relatively large so yes if you train both triceps to their maximum size it's definitely going to help with metabolic health and does it help with aesthetics? Yes, two-thirds of your arm is your triceps. Even though most girls have no clue what the triceps is, they will notice if you have huge triceps because your arms is going to be huge as f So triceps actually get some mandatory five out of five. Last but not least, shoulders. Oh, boy, do they help with combat defense? That goes without saying. High injury risk and will the risk of injury, I mean, will the injury be devastating? 100%. Does it help with combat offense? Absolutely. Does it help with metabolic health? Believe it or not, your shoulders are one of the largest muscles of your upper body, even bigger than your chest, believe it or not. And that's if you look at front, side, and real delts. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. And do the help with aesthetics, they are the very foundation of aesthetics as a male. So they go in mandatory. All right, guys, hope this video helps. Like, subscribe, buy the ebooks. I'm out.